A big reason why My Little Pony Friendship is Magic is such a great show is because of its comedy. As opposed to just being about a bunch of talking horses with no personalities repeating the words friendship and magic over and over for 22 minutes, it features a wide range of characters engaging in everything from situational to slapstick comedy. This is because the characters draw inspiration from what are essentially the fundamental building blocks of popular comedy, the Commedia dell'arte stock characters. While there is of course the show's message of love and tolerance to go with that, almost every one of the major stock characters from Commedia dell'arte can be found in the show and all contribute to the show's essential funny factor. Now, the set of Commedia dell'arte stock characters is a specific cast of personalities designed during the Italian Renaissance to interact with each other in masked performances. The goal of these performances was always to make the audience laugh, and the performers succeeded in this by keeping to their characters' traits, which were specially crafted to be both unique as well as provide plenty of opportunity for funny situations. It's true that these situations often involved sex and violence, the like of which you probably won't see on My Little Pony. Well, probably not. But what's important is the stock characters, so let's begin. The first stock character we'll take a look at is Columbina. In the Commedia world of craziness and conflict, she appears to be the only rational one around. While others act purely out of impulse and spontaneity, she will be the one taking a step back to think about her next move in a situation. In addition to her prudence, she is also very intelligent. She loves to read and has many books in her possession to choose from. She is an independent operator, always looking to educate herself and very responsible. But she's not always so serious. She can often be quite perky and sees herself as particularly feminine. She also has a talent for music, often singing and dancing to express herself. If there's one character in My Little Pony who embodies all these traits, it's Twilight Sparkle. It's clear from the show that ponies are an emotional lot, and Twilight's no exception, but she's almost always the voice of reason when her friends get into a mix-up. She can be energetic and frisky, too, always looking to prove herself, help solve a problem, do something by herself, or just being adorably nerdy. She does quite a bit of singing, too, and of course, she loves books, has a ton, and lives in a library. Pretty much a perfect match. This is my book, and I'm gonna read it! Next up is Flavio. One of the Inamorati romantic characters, Flavio often took part in whatever love-related mix-ups the Commedia cast would get up to. While as a romantic, Flavio was subject at all times to his impulses, he would be so while at the same time being sure to look as cool as possible. Even when he would do something clumsy, as he often would, he would play it off like he meant to do it. This is because he had a huge but very sensitive ego and was very popular. At the same time, he was also very hot-tempered and would often lose his cool despite his best efforts. Even so, everything he did, he did as over-the-top as he could, as he was always conscious of the opportunity to impress. While Rainbow Dash may not be so romantically inclined, and is also not a guy, her character definitely seems to have been inspired by that of Flavio. She often acts on her impulses, and does so while making sure she looks good while doing it. She's sensitive to her appearance, and keeping a good but pride-inducing reputation for herself, and can often leap into some unfortunate situations when she loses her temper. She also loves to put on a show, impressing everyone with her aerial stunts, extravagant deeds, and flair for daring do. Never fear! Your friendly neighborhood Rainbow Dash is here! Next is Zani. While Zani can refer to all members of the lower class in the Commedia setting, individually it refers to a character who is primarily a worker. Not passionate for higher thinking so much as the next meal, Zani is a faithful laborer who enjoys the more often than occasional snack. Pleased by simple pleasures, she lives in the present and is resourceful enough to adapt to any situation to meet her basic needs. She is always ready to lend a hand and often cannot help it anyway, and has a great survival instinct, not liking to be pushed around. Everything she pursues, she pursues wholeheartedly and without compromise, never losing sight of what is important to her. The character who seems to be inspired by this archetype is Applejack. Like Zani, Applejack is a hard worker, albeit more willingly, who lives off the land and helps her friends when they need it. She doesn't consider herself very complicated or hard to understand, often speaking her mind and keeping things simple. She doesn't need the high life to enjoy herself, and when she sets her heart on something, she goes after it until she no longer can. She doesn't like excessive details or being pushed around by others either. But she loves apples. This is your sister Applejack, remember? The loyalist of friends and the most dependable of ponies? Next on the list is Pedro Lino. By far the most sympathetic of the Commedia cast, Pedro Lino is always extremely shy and fearful. He doesn't like to talk much, 
especially not to anyone he doesn't know. When he does speak, he speaks in a barely audible, very soft and light voice. He tends to be clumsy and very ashamed afterwards, blaming himself for the misfortune of others and too weak to make things right, often starting to cry. If there's one area he finds comfort, it's among the animals. Often it is his job in a comedia scene to look after the animals, who he identifies with, and he loves it. Of course, in talking about Pedrolino, I can only be talking about Fluttershy too. Just like her comedia inspiration, Fluttershy is very timid and has difficulty mustering up the courage to talk to others. She is easily startled and often solves problems by running from them. Whenever she gets embarrassed or scared, she doesn't like to stick around afterwards and is prone to break down into tears. Her voice is very quiet and delicate, and for a pegasus, she is not very agile. However, she finds solace among her animal friends. She takes care of them, and often, they take care of her. I know! Is that a wallaroo? Fluttershy, you're such a loud mouth. Another one of the romantic comedia characters is Isabella. As a lady of high society, Isabella always wears the latest and greatest in current fashion. Her outfits have a tendency towards stunning extravagance and regal splendor. Her mannerisms are everything from flirtatious to dignified, but she takes great pride in her elegant beauty and romantic tendencies. She is also headstrong and independent, utilizing her comparatively good education to keep up with the scholars. However, under that facade of elegance lies a sensitive interior prone to the wildest of overdramatic temper tantrums when her dangerous mood swings take over. Her expressions of joy are just as dramatic, often involving jumping up and down, dancing, or sighing loudly. If this character doesn't scream rarity, I don't know what does. Like Isabella, rarity is both good at using her mind as well as her heart. She is smart and independent and knows how to handle herself, but she is also romantic and dramatic and knows how to use her feminine side. Her pursuit of the perfect romantic experience has caused her both frustration and joy. She is always exercising her sense for fashion and high society to boost herself up into her aspirations. However, like Isabella, she is very dramatic and can throw quite the fit when she gets upset. Just because I'm a lady doesn't mean I cannot handle myself in a sticky situation. I have them wrapped around my hoof the entire time. One of the most recognizable of the comedia characters is Arlequino, also known as the Harlequin. Acrobatic and spontaneous, if there's one thing Arlequino can't do, it's hold still. He expresses a childlike innocence in his connection to his emotions, meaning he is capable of both extreme happiness and sadness in situations where a less powerful emotion may have been more appropriate. He often acts without thinking, causing trouble most of the time, but he always means well. The one thing Arlequino loves more than somersaulting and jumping around is food. Always in a state of hunger, many of his situations revolve around him trying to get something to eat. This character is a perfect inspiration for Pinkie Pie. Pinkie's uncanny ability to simply bounce off the walls of Ponyville, and her affinity for the random, speak to her lovable personality, which is always either unbelievably happy or dismally sad. While her actions can have some definite meaning, albeit not one she always shares up front, she is still relatively innocent and can be badly hurt when her bubble of enthusiasm gets popped. She also tends to act rashly, which has caused problems for her friends more often than once. Nevertheless, she always bounces back, happy as ever. Also, just like Arlequino, she has quite a mouth for food. <laughs> hey! You know what this calls for? A party! That takes care of the main six, but there are still more Comedia stock characters to explore. Like Vittoria. Another one of the romantics, Vittoria is commonly childlike in both her mannerisms and the fact that she is an adopted child. She is different than those around her in appearance, often even a servant, but she is just as emotional. Her romantic tendencies often spell trouble for her and those around her, who have to clean up the mess afterwards. True to her romantic personality, she rarely thinks before acting out. She is fiercely loyal and faithful to the object of her affection, and is constantly suspicious and jealous of anyone who threatens to take it away. Spike's character seems to draw some inspiration from Vittoria. Like Vittoria, Spike is both a servant and a lover as he assists Twilight in her studies as well as pursues the affection of Rarity. Technically, he is an adopted child too, since he is still a baby dragon being taken care of by Twilight. Because of his literal childlike state, he is also very emotional. He can be rash, which often causes problems, but he's always sorry afterwards. He is loyal to his friends, but can be very jealous when it looks like someone else is getting the attention he wants. He's still harmless though, and occasionally wins out. But, uh, you don't scare me! How'd you like that? Another one of the more recognizable Comedia characters is Capitano, also known as the Braggart Soldier. 
Capitano is the bombastic and boastful teller of many tales of his own valor and bravery, none of which are true. In truth, he is downright cowardly in the face of real danger, and makes up stories of his past deeds to look good, and just because he loves to brag. Despite his cowardice, he has no problem physically abusing those lower on the social ladder than he. In the end, his elaborate lies are always overthrown and he is exposed as a fraud. When it comes to bragging in Ponyville, no one surpasses the self-proclaimed great and powerful Trixie. Just as Capitano invents false tales of heroism, Trixie tells the citizens of her great deeds. She speaks in a booming loud voice proclaiming her own awesomeness to all who can hear. Anyone who calls her out gets a swift thrashing and she moves on. However, when danger finally does show up, her bravery and skill disappear shortly before she herself does. In the end, her lies are exposed and she flees the town in shame. <laughs> Once again, the great and powerful Trixie has proven herself to be the most amazing unicorn in all of Equestria. <sighs> Was there ever any doubt? <laughs> Adding to the more antagonistic side of the stock characters is the Dottore. A member of some learned profession, like a doctor or professor, Dottore likes nothing better than to show off his supposed knowledge. Unfortunately, he makes most of it up, often reciting a quote in fake Latin or providing an improvised diagnosis. He is competitive and greedy, caring more for his own position in society than actually doing his job. Even when he does try to help, he ends up hurting instead. Both the Flim Flam brothers and Iron Will seem to draw inspiration from this character. The Flim Flam brothers, true to their name, are a lot more interested in driving Applejack and her farm out of business, securing all the profits for themselves, than actually feeding the thirsty citizens, and being forever known as the self-declared traveling sales ponies non pare. They employ foreign phraseology, the meaning of which they may or may not actually know, and act as if they are the authority on everything. Similarly, although perhaps less aggressively, Iron Will, fancying himself a self-help guru, attempts to inspire assertiveness in others, resulting in Fluttershy going nuts and terrorizing the town. When he doesn't get his money, he gets pretty mad too. When some pony tries to block, show them that you rock! Next up is Rufiana. One of the older characters, Rufiana is primarily a troublemaker. She is always looking for ways to undermine the love of the romantic characters. Despite her age, she is still skilled in the manners of seduction, and not above using it for her own advantage. She herself has a very shady past that she does not often share in full with anyone else. Still, she sees herself as very much a member of the upper class and prefers to associate herself with similar people. As another antagonist, Queen Chrysalis looks to have been inspired by Rufiana. Chrysalis's main goal during her appearances was to take over the love shared by her targeted lovers in order to make her own ends of taking over all the love in Equestria meet. She utilized her seductive skills, as well as her shape-shifting and mind-controlling skills, to accomplish this and get in close with her male target. As a queen, she has many minions to do her dirty work for her, and still sees herself as royalty. And whatever her past is, it is not known to the protagonists or us. <sighs> Shining Armor's love for you is even stronger than I thought. Consuming it has made me even more powerful than Celestia! The final Comedia stock character we'll look at is Pulkinella, whose name means Little Chicken. Often a very old hunchback, his deformity is not just physical. Essentially nihilistic in worldview, Pulkalina values nothing and no one except himself, given his massive ego, and is always scheming to cause some random trouble and misfortune for others. He is never truthful either, always lying, playing dumb, or even playing smart. He can often be found wearing some sort of disguise as well. While he appears to be mild-mannered, he has a deep, explosive temper, waiting to go off at all times. His actions are purely malicious and without any benefit even to himself, except that it amuses him. The ultimate malicious trickster in My Little Pony has got to be Discord. Like Pulkinella, Discord doesn't seem to have much of a goal, except to make others suffer. He employs self-disguise, mind games, misdirection, lies, and cheating to accomplish this end. Strangely enough, on the surface, he looks to be a friendly, albeit mischievous creature but hurt his ego and he will be sufficiently angry to ruin your entire kingdom. He's a pretty strange looking guy as well. Chaos is a wonderful, wonderful thing. Not as wonderful as friendship. Oh, this again. My Little Pony's funny moments are certainly plentiful, and it comes as no surprise to see that so many of the significant characters, both protagonists and antagonists, are based on the standard-issue Commedia dell'arte stock characters. 
While the stories involving them may have their differences in the specifics, I think it's safe to say that somewhere in the development of the show, some inspiration from the Italian Renaissance may have snuck in.